Welcome to this, the first of a series of talks about the book of Job, a biblical text and classic of world literature. In this time of pandemic, many questions arise about the problem of suffering. For religious people in particular, one must ask about the role of God in suffering, particularly the suffering of the innocent, where one suffers not because of something one has done or others have done to you, but for no apparent reason. A great Hebrew text, a strange hybrid mix of theological, philosophical dialogues of increasing passion and intensity, framed by an ancient folk tale that may have originated in Egypt or Babylon, attempts to answer this. The Book of Job, part of the wisdom literature section of the Hebrew Bible, or as Christians call it, the Old Testament, one of my favorite books in the whole Bible. The problem of innocent suffering, in its essence, boils down to two broad questions. First, does God cause innocent suffering? If so, does this make God cruel, a sadist, as one theologian, Dorothy Zerler, observed? At very least, what does this say about our claims that God is good and loving? And if God doesn't cause suffering, though it exists, does that suggest that God lacks power? Behind this cluster of questions lies the further question, what does innocent suffering say about or do to our received understanding of God? The second question moves us towards a focus on ourselves. How do we respond in faith to suffering? The first set of responses to this question revolves around our attempt to find a kind of cause and effect meaning in suffering. We did something, God is punishing us. We are paying the price for our sins, or in some variations of it, for the sins of others. Our only appropriate response is to simply suck it up, accept it as just punishment for what we have others have done. This is a common religious response, rooted in an assumption that everything has cause and effect, that God has fixed rules that must be followed, and that God can ultimately be mean. A second option is to see this as proof that God does not exist. All religion is nonsense. We're alone, thrown into a chaotic universe, and we must simply live with the madness of a godless creation, a universe governed by amoral laws of evolution, utterly indifferent to us. Our challenge is to do what little we can to make our world better or simply give up in despair, possibly even kill ourselves. A third option accepts the possibility of God, but rejects God either in protest against God's cruelty or out of contempt for God's indifference or incompetence. The classic literary example of this is Ivan Karamazov in Fyodor Dostoevsky's classic novel, The Brothers Karamazov. Faced with evil and suffering in the world, Ivan renounces the God he apparently still believes exists. Now, the book of Job, edited together from its sources, finally somewhere after the Israelite return from Babylon, faces this problem head on. The good and pious Job's life, livelihood and family has been destroyed for no apparent reason, at least to him. We know, the readers know, that he is the pawn in a game between God and God's chief advisor, the Satan. Should Job curse God and die, as his wife suggests at one point? Should he acknowledge that his suffering is caused by his sins, even though he knows he's innocent? And note the paradox. You should lie about your guilt to placate a presumably all-knowing God. Or should Job take another track? Demand that God answer his question. The question of all persons going through arbitrary and meaningless suffering. The question, why? Until next Wednesday.